Hi everyone, welcome again in this video. So in the previous video, I showed you how to use the offset function, the basic use of it, and how it can make your uh, formulas dynamic, like how we used sum and it dynamically updates going to the right instead of uh, going down when you double click the formula downwards. So another application of the offset function is for example here, I have a or an attendance tracker wherein I have my, the names of my employees here. And then let's say that these are the days per week. I label them week one. Let's say that this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then going to week two, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. And I have this smaller table here wherein I want to count how many times the letter P, let's say for present, showed up for the cells for week one. Same for week two, and then same for week three. So that requires a dynamic range as well, because if I do a regular count if like this, and then highlight the cells, B2 to F6, and then identify my criterion. So it would be problematic because if I click uh, P here, and I have to make it, locked or absolute on column b close so i got the correct one for week one but if i double click this well looking fine three letter a's for that uh week but if i drag this to the right then i will get wrong answers because my count if will only move one cell to the right as what i did in the small table and it will not pick up week two cells so again, I have to offset the range of cells. So uh, just to say, so make the range dynamic as well, not fixed B2 to F6. So for this, I will have to use the offset function. So instead of B2 to F6, I will transform it to offset. So I will start with offset and then I will, I, uh, I will nominate A1 as my starting position. And then I would move the cursor one cell downwards and then one cell to the right. That would be, that would send the cursor from A1 to B2. And then five for the height because I have five employees and then five columns for week one. And luckily it's the same number of days per week. So I will not be bothered by the last two numbers. But enter, and we're looking good here. Then I have to make this absolute. The reference is almost always made absolute. Double click, and I get the same answer. So doing fine there. But right now, even if I already transformed this to offset, I would, if I right click to the right or drag to the right, I will get the same answer because I have the same arguments a1, 1, 1, 1, 5, 5. They're all absolute values a1 1155 1, 5. so we have to make one of these numbers dynamic so to make one of them dynamic okay, we have to use the match function again so we have to identify which of these four arguments should be updated into a more dynamic approach so definitely not the last two because the last two corresponds to the number of employees and the number of days per week so we're fixed with that. So we're only left with one and one here. So the first number one will make the cursor go down from cell A1. And that is also an absolute movement. From A1, I always have to go down, one cell downwards. Now the next number here, one, is my movement to the right. So that is okay, uh, the argument that needs to be dynamic. So instead of one, I will use match for this. I'm going to say match, open parentheses, and then I'm going to match this value over here, T10, make it absolute at row 10, comma, search for it here, because I want to know where week one started among those range of cells. I have to make it absolute, and then comma zero. So match of C10, that would be week one, among those headers, exact match. 
So I replaced the number one with the match function. Enter. And looking good, I get the same answer. Double click, and I have 3 and 0 over here, which is looking fine. Now let's see if there's going to be uh, the correct answer now for the other weeks. Okay, so we got some good looking numbers there. Let's see. So there are 25 cells under week two because it's a five by five uh, matrix or table. And how many A's are, letter are there? So I, I hope you saw here we have one and two. So looking good for the A's. And then for the VL should be two as well. Okay, there's our two VLs. So looking good there. And let's just double check for week three. There should be two letter A's under week three. Okay, there they are. So we have here two letter A's. So looking good, our offset function correctly made our count if dynamic. Now let's further enhance our formula with other things that we can do here. So let's say that I will uh, add more employees to my list. So there's a possibility that it's not just five employees. So I would have to update the number five here because this is the one that identifies how many employees or how many uh, rows I have to highlight for my uh, offset. So for this one, I would have to use count if, sorry, count A, because I want to count all the values under column A, because technically they represent how many um, values, okay, or how many cells have values under column A. So this would be five. There are five values under column A, and it seems that my formula is doing fine. I have to make this absolute, okay? So drag to the downwards, and then drag to the right. So no changes there, but if I if ever I have, uh, I have to add a new uh, name here, and then update my tracker, you will see that my values are updating correctly. Okay. So that's the benefit of having a dynamic uh, height. And I hope you see here the power of offset function. The offset function has four numbers, if you remember. Each of this can be made dynamic if needed to. So that you don't have to rewrite the formula every now and then. And this is what makes offset really powerful because it can really automate your task as long as you identify the correct formula for each of the arguments of the offset function. So let's say um, I want to make sure that if I add another week, then my offset, my formula should be able to do that. So that means that I have to update the one of the arguments here and it would be the cells that i am matching okay this one so instead of ending at cell p1 maybe i could make it end at z so that it has an allowance up to column z you could make it aa or ab if you want or maybe just the entire row right so just put here row one however if you do this remember that row one includes the first cell which we have to adjust okay so we have to adjust that uh, into minus one in order to offset the starting position so now we are matching week one all the way into the first row but we have to adjust it to minus one to accommodate that extra cell at the beginning. So there, and we have uh, 27 letter P's here, just to double check, Let's count if, normal count if. And then I'm going to highlight this, 
I want to find how many letter P's are there. So I'm getting the correct answer, 27. And the nice thing about our updated formula is that, let me update the rest, is that if I add week 4 over here, say I'm already on the third day of my week 4, and let's say I have letter P's here, one absent, and then two VLs. And then let's see if my table here can be updated as such. Week four. And then drag to the right. And there you go. So 15 P's, one absent, and two VLs. Let's double check that. So 15 letter P's. Okay. And then we have one absent and two VLs. So looking good with our offset function. And there you have it. That's the offset function. Maybe I would I could prepare more offset related videos uh, in the future. But for now, I hope it's clear how the offset function is actually quite a very powerful function, something that can do VLOOKUP, index match, XLOOKUP even. And that's it. If you have any questions about this function, please use the comment section. I'll do my best to answer you as soon as I can. And also, hope you like and subscribe in our page so that uh, it helps our web page, our YouTube page. Okay. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video.